Um, so my research is uh, related to the incorporation of sustainability in process systems engineering. Um, process systems engineering deals with uh, taking a chemistry and turning raw materials into products through a series of processing steps, uh, which we call unit operations. And um, we use uh, the raw materials currently used are fossil based resources which means we have to use um, a non-renewable resource and convert it into products by also producing uh, byproducts and hazardous wastes. Um, so uh, the performance of these process plants need to be optimized um, given the dependence on fossil resources in efficient ways so that we can minimize the impact on economics, uh, environment, and the society. And my research deals with the quantification of these uh, aspects in sustainability for efficient use of these resources. Um, so fundamentally, sustainability is uh, simple to conceptualize, that we want to have a balance between economic, environment, and society. But when it comes to doing the math behind it, it is very difficult to quantify. And um, the three pillars of uh, economic, environmental, and societal are always opposing each other in uh, while trying to achieve the best outcome. Um, so the definition of best here is also extremely relative. So what is best to me can be uh, cannot be best to another person. So uh, finding a way to quantify uh, sustainability is a tremendous challenge that I think makes this research so important. Um, so uh, I have taught some of the advanced courses in chemical engineering. Uh, for example, I've taught senior capstone design. So if you were to talk to any chemical engineer, um, the single most uh, topic that they remember uh, spending hours on is the capstone design project. That is because like it is a, a group uh, project where everybody comes together and um, they will do solve a real world problem. Um, the other course that I've taught in gas and petroleum processing, which is a senior level elective, um, my key to keeping uh, students engaged is by engaging in a uh, dialogue with them continuously and also engaging myself in the project. So if I want uh, my students to excel, I also want to give time and effort uh, to the students um, and make them uh, aware of the whole project, how to do it and how best to solve these problems. From my personal experience, I have learned that uh, most uh, students learn when uh, their teacher cares about uh, the material and shows considerable interest in helping them learn. So if you give everyone a book and uh, they can read through it, uh, they're exceptional students at Texas A&M especially, uh, they can read through them, they can analyze and they can solve uh, the problems. Um, but the core thing that I uh, help or like my teaching philosophy is to help students know how to learn so they know what to learn but it's the difference is how do we learn a topic what are the different steps that we follow in learning a topic uh, for example um, designing a reactor let's say we are wanting to design a reactor based on um, an input and output of uh, raw materials and products um, so how do you uh, design a reactor so first you need to know what your uh, reactants are. Second is to identify your products. Third is to identify the type of reaction. Fourth is uh, identify the reaction conditions that will give you the best amount of products. And um, then uh, the reaction uh, conditions uh, have to be optimized in terms of temperature, pressure, residence time, etc. But each of these items are obtained from a different source and um, the students have to get information from these different sources. So my job is to guide them in knowing where to look for information. Now, once they learn it, it's very easy to do the second time. So they know where to look for information. But um, my philosophy as a teacher is to 
let them understand the first time itself how and where to look for the information. So um, according to me, there are four uh, steps in solving an engineering design problem. And this is, again, my personal uh, experience that I'm talking about. So the first is method, second heuristics, uh, third is a fact check, and the fourth is troubleshooting and reconciliation. So when we talk about method, um, engineering is a structured um, and very, very quantitative uh, discipline. So you have a method, you have your mass and energy balances that you have to fulfill. So you have to know the core basics of your uh, engineering problem. Um, next come heuristics, and heuristics is a, a special uh, skill that people develop over the number of years. That is, what are your best um, rules of thumb, if you will, so everything cannot be quantified. So what is the next best value that you can work with? So that is heuristics. Um, third comes fact check, which is very important in uh, your uh, entire uh, design problem solution or finding a solution of your problem. So you need to know what you are expecting. You need to know what answers you're expecting. So you have to always have a fact check. So for example, if you're designing a tower or a column, um, and if you have a diameter that you come up with, which is uh, 100 meters, you have to think, okay, whether a 100 meter col diameter column is possible or not, uh, because a 100 meter is a tenth of a kilometer, so that's pretty huge. Um, so again, so then you have to go back and see where you made a mistake. Um, the fourth uh, one and the final uh, one that is you have to troubleshoot and reconciliate. So you have to understand how you will go back uh, and look at your problem, where you are, have to look for your um, troubleshooting uh, experiences, and uh, how do you reconcile your information so that you can reach to a final solution. Yes, absolutely. My mentor in graduate school was, um, I think he was around 78 when he took me and he retired right after I uh, graduated. But I got to work with one of the most senior, most professors, and I'm so thankful for his mentorship throughout my grad graduate school studies. Um, he, the best piece of advice uh, that he gave to me is to be objective in any situation, be it work, be it personal uh, life and uh, other areas, and um, understand what is in my best interest to get the work done. So um, he taught me how to articulate my ideas in work and um, then into writing. So. Um, we went on to write uh, a book after my PhD, um, which very few people get to publish their PhD research into a book. So I'm, I'm really grateful to have the mentorship of my advisor. Texas A&M is um, perhaps, uh, it signifies the true spirit of Texas, that is the Aggie spirit, which is I, what I like. Um, the students here are exceptional. The professional uh, staff members are great to work with. Um, the university boosts a very deep confidence in you, which um, I think um, has led to uh, the success of the students after they graduate.